Hey guys, so with the popularity of Scentwork sports like AKC, a lot of people are training and that's a wonderful thing. Uh, the problem is with any new sport, you tend to have a lack of experienced trainers in that area. Oftentimes this leads people to seek out knowledgeable trainers and often we have a lot of questions left. Uh, typically we see people to get a good start by doing uh, like online systems, however, with any online system it's not hands-on so there are questions left unanswered. Uh, with that being said, I went on Facebook a few days ago, posted on some forums, what are your questions, what are issues that you have, and thought it would be good to do a Q&A video with a very experienced dog trainer. Uh, with that being said, stay tuned. I think you're going to like what we have. So we just wrapped up another wonderful weekend of training, and I'm sitting here with uh, Joey Lay, the uh, founder, owner, and training director at Arady Canine based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And we decided to actually take some of your questions offline and let this guy who does this for a living actually answer them. So uh, Joey, you know, with this being said, we had a lot of good questions, and I guess I want to start with, uh, you know, what system do you utilize when training dogs? It's actually a good question. Uh, with the modern approach to training, I say modern because this has been going on for more than 20 years now. Uh, I utilize a various system. So my primary system, I pre-select dogs for uh, certain characteristics. And a lot of those characteristics do very, very well within a modified hair method. Um, and for those that you don't know, I'm referring to Randy Hair, uh, a, a buddy of mine. Uh, I've modified his particular system, which all training is nothing more than modification of somebody else's system. Um, that's how things get better. Uh, and I, I pair it with, you know, some different approaches. I utilize more of a, uh, what you would consider a marker-based system. Uh, marker-based system being something around the operant conditioning, uh, understanding, um, and, and then just kind of push forward with that. But generally speaking, uh, I leave it up to the dog that I have in front of me, um, and I utilize whatever I feel is going to be best for that particular dog. We will pre-select dogs that are best suited for our system, especially when it comes to law enforcement. Okay. Uh, one of the other questions we had here was, how do you approach multiple hides in one search area? And that was from Cassidy. All right, so Cassidy, what I generally do is evaluate the size of the room that I'm on, uh, and if I'm in a smaller room and, uh, let's say under 500 square feet, um, uh, I will evaluate, uh, that particular training scenario, the different levels of hides. So I, I approach hides, especially if we're, if we're talking about going to law enforcement community at what level. So I generally break things down from level one being anything from the ground to my knee, level two being anything from my knee to my waist. Level three, anything from my waist to my head, and level four, anything above that. The next thing that I'll do is I'll evaluate what kind of wind current or wind swirl do I have in the room, and what kind of shelving. Shelving is anything that will hold the odor um, and potentially hold the odor away from the source. Um, so when I take all of those things into account, especially as I'm hiding odor, um, when I take all of those things into account, then I break that room down into quarters and then figure out or you know four different sections of the room and then I will evaluate from there. So if I have partial in the center of a room and then I have partial on the exterior area, and again this is not the um, we're not discussing bomb detection because I will break it down even further than that. Um, but something where I don't have to worry about somebody getting killed. Um, I will then, generally speaking, work partial. So when a lot of my guys are doing partial searches for narcotics detection or any form of illegal contraband, um, oftentimes what they'll do is they'll pay, place parcels in the center, and then we'll run each individual container, each individual piece of uh, that parcel, and we'll run that first. Uh, again, worrying, worrying about what's going on with uh, the air in the area, the temperature and stuff like this, because all of this plays uh, into it, 
And then from there, I will search the room, uh, understanding that odor will drop. You know, in particular, it's heavier than air, so that odor's gonna drop and pull. And uh, work that first at my level one, level two area, or so anything from the ground, till somewhere around my waist. Um, I'll work that first. I give the dog its head first. In other words, I give that dog the freedom to search in and of itself. A, it looks better on camera when the dog comes to a uh, primary or secondary response uh, into a final indication. We'll cover primary or secondary response. I'm sure some people will come somehow approach that subject. Um, I'll look at the primary or secondary response first um, and then we'll start doing detail based off of that primary or secondary response. And then go on to the next one after I re uh, release the dog or mark the dog to let it know if the behavior is correct and reward is forthcoming. Uh, I'll reward that dog, interact with the dog uh, based on that reward, and then move on from there and cut that space off and move forward. Okay, sounds good. Um, Lisa McFarland asked, uh, how do I work on getting the dog to display the same alert in new areas as it does at home? Well, it's actually kind of funny because that's something that I come across all the time. I do more than just detection. We do more than just detection. And uh, especially if I'm talking about our IPO, uh, French ring club uh, where everybody always tells me well, my dog's great at home he does this perfect at home I hear it all the time I've heard it for the past 20 plus years um, and it's great to work your dog and if you if you look at the Skinner and Boxer you look at a lot of these other approaches uh, to the training the training in a boxer inside of a bubble and that's great that's a great thing for your very beginning is to train in a very vanilla area so that you can consistently get the same uh, look. And then very quickly, I will, not very quickly, as soon as I know that that animal has that uh, capacity to give me a high uh, degree of uh, the same behaviors, then I'll start working maybe on the outside of the comfortable area. Still in the same area, but just outside of that. So if I'm working it in a garage-based area, that I know is enclosed. I have no uh, outside sample coming in to contaminate my area and my dog can still focus. Then I'll move it to the outside. And then from the outside, my dog will still be a little bit distracted, right? Because my dog is now thinking to himself, wow, this is normally where I'm doing something other than this particular behavior. So I'll work that dog in that area. And then I'll move from that area. Sorry, we have flies buzzing us here. Uh, I'll move from that particular area or my training area. So if you're training at one particular location, uh, for us, um, you know, it, it would be at our facility. Once I remove from our facility, I will back up just a little bit and I'll pre-stem my dog with a pre-stem signal to let the dog know this is what we're doing, which is the same pre-stem signal I've given my dog well before uh, I ever started this. So it could be pinching off the hips, it could be showing the dog the object that it's going to be getting ultimately rewarded with. Maybe do a little bit of uh, pairing as far as uh, obedience or interaction uh, with uh, food or something like that. If you're using more food-based system, figure out ways that I can mark the behavior and give that reward to get the dog engaged with me to then further engage away from me and actually start searching. So kind of start pairing similarly that I would at home. And then also... Don't go too fast for the dog. So if my dog is offering great behavior at home and I'm running these level four searches and he's jumping through the sink cone, jumping through the sink cone, giving me that primary, secondary behavior, and then finally coming to the final response at home on a level four high, you know, something in the ceiling or hanging from a rafter, um, I can't expect him to go to somewhere new where he has so many outside distractors. I might break it back down do a level one type eye, maybe a level two type of eye, that's maybe a little bit easier for the dog. Get the dog engaged with what, what it is that we're doing in that area and then build off of that. You know, small stepping stones. You know, don't, don't, total immersion is a thing that you can act, that, that you can do, but sometimes for all dogs, that might not be the best scenario. So just knowing the dog that you have is going to uh, take you a lot further. Okay, great. So that's gonna conclude this video. Folks, stay tuned because this is the first video in a two-part series. We had to break it down to two videos because we had so many responses. We had so many questions come in on the different forums and through Messenger and email. So we wanted to try to pick uh, the most common themes that we saw and answer those.
Now, if you have any more questions, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, follow my friend Joey and Heather at Arady Canine. They're on Instagram. They are on uh, Facebook. Uh, follow us. We host these monthly. The next one is going to be November 19th and the 20th. If you want more information, you can message me through YouTube. You can message me on Facebook. Uh, you can email Heather at ArradyCanine.com. It's spelled out just like on a shirt, all one word. Uh, because I think you'll really get a lot out of these. And, and as you can see from the video that we just hosted, Joey's an encyclopedia of knowledge. And when we're starting, it's great to find folks like this to mentor under. So like I said, hope you enjoyed the video. We look forward to seeing you at one of these workshops real soon.